everyone, welcome back to the Hubian channel. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the do's and don'ts as a live streamer. Basic things that I still come across new streamers and see. And I think that might be helpful and could be put into a video that can help you fine tune your streaming skills and also help you achieve more and make more friends or make new friends. Let's talk about the do's. Very simple number one would be welcome and greet your viewers. It sounds very simple, but very often what happens for new streamers is that at the beginning their streams are empty and not so many people are joining. So I see that they are getting comfortable with themselves and they put themselves into like a standby mode and waiting for action. So when I enter streams and I see them sitting there doing nothing or you can really see that they are waiting for action to happen, um, not everyone has the motivation or the energy to actually break the ice, start a conversation, right? So then Personally, I would leave, but then I know how hard it is as a streamer. So then, I, of course, I would type and then um, you see straight away they are switched on, they react to it. But also what I have, like this, this case, for example, is good. But then there's also the case where streamers are such in this standby mode that they get distracted. So they don't pay so much attention to their screen anymore. So it takes them actually a while to notice that someone has actually entered their stream. But seeing that is, it is very sad because you might have lost already another potential viewer that has joined your stream before, but after a minute of no reaction at all, um, seeing people just hanging in there, this is where they don't stay and they don't have the patience if they don't know you. So. This brings us to number two, which is how you can keep yourself busy and how you can make things more interesting. It's when you talk to yourself. Regardless if there is one viewer or no viewer, at least it is always you and you perform for yourself because you want to perform and always be ready if someone joins, if someone is watching your stream, but not entering your room, they can still watch your stream and then decide if it's worth it for them to join your stream or not. So you don't want this to happen and miss this chance out when you just think, oh, no one is watching because you never know when will be that moment. Let's come to the next important point for new streamers is when you remind and thank your viewers for supporting you, following you and sharing your content. Make sure it sounds natural and you don't beg or force it on them because nothing is worse than having this feeling of like being pressured to do something that you actually don't want to. And um, I come across this follow for follow um, situation and it doesn't feel good because you want them to follow you when they like you, not because you ask them for it. But I mean, if you want to hit the numbers, fair enough, why not? But thinking about building a fan base, it's you want to filter the people that are really interested in you that would come back for you, right? Something that helps for your engagement would be whenever you are hosting your own event, but you have to think it through. So for example, who are the participants? What are the prizes? What can the viewer gain from joining this event of yours? For example, top contributors of your event at the end of the month will get a fan sign from you. Or if it's a competition where you can invite other streamers to join your stream and participate in your game or in your stream, it also brings more engagement to your stream and you really take the initiative. And this is something that you need. Either you join competitions or you create your own competition and event so that there is activity and gives people a reason to come back and check for an update. Let's continue with the do not list. And the first one is very simple. It's to not take people for granted. It's a general advice, but it 
also works for streaming because you cannot take your viewers for granted, your supporter or your contributor for granted because they have been around on the app uh, probably much longer than you and they are watching other people too and supporting them too. So as a new streamer, when you face it for the first time that you suddenly see your supporter maybe um, spending a lot of time in someone else's stream as well and you thought you would be the only one. Um, it can be a bit disappointing but you should not focus your energy on this. It's more about being grateful and thankful that they have taken their time to visit your stream and spend as much time as they have and that they can in your stream. So from the perspective, you would be focusing on more the positive side and the negative side that you have to share the attention with someone else. But um, I think it does make a difference and um, yeah, where your energy goes, people can feel it. So instead of being frustrated and um, being angry or mad at someone, it's better just to appreciate that they make it to your stream. Another big no-go for me is to stream on multiple channels at the same time because you would lose your focus on the stream and especially as a new streamer multitasking is already tough enough for you and then also thinking that you might save yourself some time but then lose your viewers because you don't give them the attention that they deserve. Um, it is a tough decision and it comes with a price. So if you are focusing on just clocking in hours on different platforms at the same time, okay. But um, people that are joining a stream and then seeing you talking to someone else and not paying attention to the chat, they wouldn't feel special at all. So they'd rather leave and find out another place to park. So you have to decide for yourself, like what's your goal with the streaming? If it's just your you streaming your hours, and completing your hours, yes, but then if it comes to engagement and then really to meet people and interact with them, it is much harder for you to talk to multiple people. And when they see, and it's very easy with your eyes at like which chat you are looking at, and if there is something going on on the chat or not, obviously you can read. And if there is no John or if there is no Alisa in the chat, then you probably can guess. And also imagine the first impression that you are visiting someone's stream and then you are like curious to see what they are up to and then you figure that they, they don't even pay attention to their stream at all. So it would be sad if you would lose this first impression. <laughs> the next one is a funny one. It is to not overuse your sound card. You might have invested in a really good light source, um, a good camera, a good microphone and then you want to upgrade it with a nice sound card for the right effect. But when you are nervous, for example, or if you are completely new and you want to kill the silence, that's when you easily can overuse this function that it adds. Some clapping is fine, but then uh, the laughing effect, for example, is very, very loud depending on how you install it. But just make sure that you don't because whenever you enter a stream, and you want to actually hear the host, but suddenly all you hear is these sound effects and nothing else than that. It's for me personally, I find it is a turn off, but um, yeah, maybe for you, it's a different feeling. Um, I think everything with the right amount is the perfect way to handle things. So you need a good balance of using your voice and then using your equipment so then it can be in harmony. Let's say it this way. I'm often trying to check out new streamers as well because this mental support is making a huge difference. I still remember the first people that joined my stream. It makes a difference if they have the patience to hang out there with you. So I try, but what I see as well is um, when you schedule a stream, make it at least like one or two days before so then people can really prepare themselves for your streaming time. But don't do it maybe like one or two hours before you start streaming because it will be not enough. I, I'm not necessarily checking my phone in, during this period of time. I would have if I knew that you would be streaming. But if I don't, then maybe I won't look at it. And then it would be sad if I would miss out the chance to catch you as a streamer. 
So remember to do your schedule beforehand in time so then people can arrange their schedule to yours. The far most funniest reminder that I have for today is do not promote yourself in someone else's stream unless they give you the permission and you ask for it. Sounds funny, but it is still happening. I still see it and um, it needs to be said. I understand that new streamers follow the advice to join new streams, to join other streams, to make friends, to engage in the conversation, participate in the chat. But I often see as well that it happens that they storm a stream and then they shout out their name and ask everyone to follow them and um, to support them. So just put yourself in the streamer's shoes, doing your thing in peace, doing your broadcast, and someone is just entering and screams out loud their name, right? So it's not really nice, it's distracting. And um, also the viewers that are in that channel or in that stream already are friends of the host. So it's not really, like, it's not really leaving a good impression, a good first impression. And um, when you want to stick around for a longer time, then that's not the way how you can break the ice. So make it naturally, participate or listen first and then see how it goes and your time eventually will come because the right questions will be asked because everyone to get to know you will ask the basic questions. What are you doing? If you're new to the community or not. And then you will have that moment where you can introduce yourself. You are a new streamer and you are just starting off and would appreciate uh, whenever they have time to visit your stream. Well, that's pretty much it. That was my little list of do's and don'ts as new streamers. Let me know if you can relate to some situations, maybe what you think about it as a new streamer or maybe as an experienced streamer. Maybe I forgot something, so please comment in the section below that everyone can learn from it too. And until the next video, take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.